Klondike days again. That time of the year when everyone heads out for a few hours of fun and excitement. Something Edmontonians have been doing for the past 97 years. started 97 years ago in September of 1879 with the Edmonton Agricultural Society. Their purpose was to manifest to the world and ourselves what latitude 53 degrees 30 minutes in the Northwest is capable of producing. Lieutenant Colonel W.D. Jarvis of the Northwest Mounted Police was elected president and the Hudson's Bay Company's chief factor at Edmonton, Richard Hardesty, was elected vice president. A writer of the day described Edmonton. There is no town, it is Fort Edmonton. You can look over the valley with a telescope and see on one hand a hotel, a Methodist chapel and parsonage, and a few scattered houses. And on the other, All Saints English Church, a few Indian tents, and a few scattered houses up the river. The Saskatchewan Herald printed at Battleford was the only newspaper in the Northwest Territories at that time. On November 17, 1879, they reported as follows. The first exhibition of the Edmonton Agricultural Society was held at Edmonton House on the 15th October. Richard Hardesty Esquire of the Hudson's Bay Company kindly offered the use of two rooms in the fort, one which was devoted to the vegetable and grain, the other to the ladies' work. Livestock displays were outdoors in rough pens or tethered on the fort grounds. Exhibitors came from St. Albert in the Sturgeon District, Fort Saskatchewan and the Edmonton Settlement, the only farming districts in this area at the time. They competed for $173 in cash prizes and $150 to be applied as credit on their 1880 seed grain purchases. Around 1890, the location was changed to Nemeo Avenue, now known as 97th Street, just north of Jasper Avenue. Then it moved to the vicinity of 105th Street, north of Jasper Avenue. In 1900, the managing group became incorporated as the Edmonton Industrial Exhibition Association. And in 1901, the fair was held on a new site in the River Valley in the vicinity of the present Renfrew Park. From the fairgrounds to below the fort, the present location of the 105th Street Traffic Circle and River Road was open ground where the Indians would pitch their tents during fair time. The fair site included a covered grandstand, a large racetrack, and an infield sports area. <laughs> the Edmonton Exhibition Association received its charter and shortly after that the city of Edmonton took over the reins. The last exhibition on the Ross Flats took place in 1909. In 1910 the exhibition was held for the first time at its new location in an area that the year previous had been nothing but bush and sloughs. This is the land that it still occupies today. Stables were built to accommodate 600 head of cattle, 100 racehorses, 440 other horses, plus sheep, hogs, hogs, and poultry. A grandstand was built to seat 4,500 people, and in 1913, the arena, now known as the Klondike Palace, was completed. By 1919, the attendance figure had exceeded the 100,000 mark. Now the annual festival is known as Klondike Days, and attendance has topped the 600,000 mark. 1879 to 1976. The Edmonton Exhibition has certainly come a long way.